and ultimately by the prayers of his wives and by his own being humbled by the powers of Krishna. Krishna knew exactly what it would take. His ego was crushed along with his hoods. And he humbled himself and surrendered. It's very interesting. A little later in Krishna's Leela we find the um, the story where Krishna tells his friends, the same cowherd boys, the same cowherd boys who were <coughs> And the same cows <laughs> who were there with Kaliya. Krishna told his friends, you know, his friends actually approached him and said, we're hungry. And Krishna said, go to these Brahmins and get some food. So the little, the little gopas went to the Brahmins who were performing a yajna. And they said, Balaram and Krishna are very hungry and they're in a forest close by and we know during this particular um, phase of your sacrifice it's very auspicious to give food and charity and you have so much food. Give us some food to bring to Krishna and Balaram. The Brahmins, they had their pride. Kaliya had his pride in the mode of ignorance. The Brahmins had their pride in the mode of goodness. What was their pride? They also, they also hurt these little boys' feelings very bad. They, Kaliya committed um, physical violence upon these children. The Brahmins in the mode of goodness, they committed emotional violence to these children by ignoring them. They ignored because these yagyas are in the mode of goodness, basically. They were so absorbed in doing this pious activity of a fire yagyas and chanting mantras and performing mudras and doing all sorts of pujas they were chanting God's names in their own ways. And their idea was to enter into heavenly worlds, to be liberated from sufferings of this world. Very much mode of goodness stuff. But they were so proud of their knowledge, of their uplifting other people with Brahminical blessings, of perfectly chanting mantras and performing pujas. That was their pride. And due to their pride, they completely ignored these children. We are Brahmins. We are worshipping the gods. We don't have time for these little cowherd boys. So the boys were very, very hurt. And they came back to Krishna. And Krishna saw that they were despondent. Why were they hurt? They were hurt because it wasn't that they were hungry. They knew that Krishna and Balaram were hungry. And they, their life and soul was to bring food to them. And they failed. They failed in their devotional service. And this was so painful to their hearts. It's the pain of love. So ultimately, in that beautiful story, which we all know, Krishna said, they are too much proud, and they are too much obsessed with their you know, mode of goodness, aspirations, go to their wives. They don't have high education. They don't have followers, but they love me. And the Brahmins' wives, they were willing to risk 
everything of the material world to give Krishna happiness. When the little boy said, Krishna's hungry and he's over there in the forest, they immediately started packing their baskets of prasad and their husbands and their fathers and their in-laws and everybody else were saying, no, you do not go. We need you here. They didn't even explain. They just left. <laughs> Saravadhanaman put it, yes, sure. Their goal was Krishna's happiness. Some Siddhi Tosha. And like the gopis in the Ras Lila, they forsook everything. And one of the most difficult things to do, especially for young ladies of that stature of society, they had absolutely no idea what the future would hold. Would they be homeless? Would they be forsaken? They didn't know how to live in the jungles. But they, these were not even considerations for them. They had such simple-hearted faith in Krishna. If we please Krishna, that's all. Nothing to fear, nothing to worry. Abhaya charanaravindare. They were totally fearless. Not because they were great warriors, not because they were great scholars, but because they had such innocent, simple faith that if we please Krishna, that's the all in all. Whatever may come or not come. And Krishna blessed them with the highest perfection of life. And when they came back home, they were effulgent with the ecstasies of Prema Bhakti. And their husbands saw it. And their husbands, because they knew the scriptures, intellectually they knew them thoroughly. They understood that their wives had attained the perfection of life. And they also understood all they had to do was go, go to Krishna and surrender, and they would have achieved the same. But they didn't. Because they still had this ahankar, this ego. And therefore they were afraid. If we go, if Kamsa finds out, he may be angry with us. The Yajyapatnis, they couldn't care less what Kamsa does. They had no ego. They had simple love, simple faith to serve Krishna. 